Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Uh, today's question comes to us from Sebastian uh, Bruzeska, uh, who is uh, Delta Charlie 3, Sierra Bravo. He says, my name is Sebastian. Uh, he follows my channel on YouTube, says they've been very helpful. He is concerned about lightning protection and has a question. Uh, there are two things he has questions about. One is lightning protection for a half-wave dipole, and second, a J-pole antenna. So we'll talk a little bit about those. Before we do that, I'd like to pay a special thank you to Kenneth R. Van Wick, a recent patron who has uh, signed up on patreon.com slash ke0og to help support this channel. You too can become a patron by going to that same place. The link is in the description below and also at the bottom of this video. And pick a level that you want. And, and none of the levels are very scary. So uh, let's take a look at this question. Uh, first of all, he has a half-wave dipole. Now he has a half-wave dipole, okay? And it's the classic version where it's broken in the center and he has coax that comes up to it. This is coax, okay, and the outer shield goes to this side and the inner conductor goes to this side, okay? And this total length from here to here is one half wavelength, give or take to adjust for SWR, okay? Now, his question has to do with lightning protection. Okay, down here at the shack, he says this coax is grounded, but that only grounds the uh, outer conductor. It does not ground the center conductor. And anyway, a coax has both, uh, since it's uh, the coax has the uh, central wire coming up and it has a shield around here made of uh, woven copper or sometimes solid aluminum. And this shield on the inside conducts the RF and sometimes on the outside with a configuration like this, you'll get some RF coming down the outside. You can avoid this if you put some sort of ballon right here, but a lot of people just do it this way. And I do too, and it works just fine for me. So um, now he's curious about lightning protection for this. Um, and now, first of all, it's very important to understand that uh, if you get a direct strike, all bets are off. I have had a direct strike at my station, and it's worked very it uh, evaporated my antenna, literally evaporated it. So let's put this antenna here. Uh, well, that's off center, isn't it? Okay. Coming down to, and this is the way it should be done. There should be a ground rod, uh, eight feet, um, two and a half meters, something like that. And your lightning arrestor should be right here and you connect to the lightning arrestor, and then you go in the wall to your house right there. You want to keep the lightning outside. So this is a lightning arrestor. I just happen to have one right here. This is an Alpha Delta model TT3G50. Now, note this has got the UHF connectors. You can get these with N connectors because those are the ones that are popular in Europe. Okay, this part it attaches to the ground. Uh, there are multiple ways to do it. One of the simplest might be just put a hose clamp around the ground rod and around this and tighten it down. Don't do any soldering on this uh, lightning ground because the very high current from the lightning will cause that to evaporate. Now inside this is what's called a flash tube. And this right here uh, is like a spark gap and it will arc over in the event of lightning. Now it takes a lot of volts to initiate an arc but once the arc is initiated the voltage across these things is minimal 
And so that will cause the lightning to be uh, taken to ground. What's inside this thing here, you can see that the inside, the central wire goes straight through, okay? But what you do is you're putting this little flash tube across here okay and putting this thing in on top of it it's actually easier to do from the bottom i can't get the threads to line up there we go there is a uh, rubber gasket right there and this is finger tight only okay the other things of course are quite tight so this is how this side over here that's connected to the center conductor finds a lightning relief is through a lightning arrestor like this one now there are three major brands of lightning arrestors in the united states i don't know about abroad they are alpha delta delta Alpha Delta, Morgan, and Polyphaser. These are what I would call acceptable, good lightning arresters. You should get one of these brands. Now, I know that MFJ and other people like that make what they call lightning arresters, but they don't have the heft and the grounding ability and the large current handling capability of these. Now you have to note, these are made for two power levels, 200 watts and 2000. If you're just gonna operate your 100 watt station, get the 200 watt one down here. If you're going to operate with an amplifier, you need the bigger one. The way you can tell them apart with Alpha Delta is this right here has pink lettering on it. See the pink lettering. And this is the, I believe, the little power one. But you can tell the difference. So you can order them without the little I mean, with either uh, the low voltage or the high voltage, and that's kind of true of uh, all of these. As it turns out, the Morgan company changed hands not long ago, and it's uh, K, uh, KF7L who owns that outfit now, and he also makes uh, very nicely built uh, entry points. Uh, that are all properly grounded and everything like that. So I've used Alpha Delta because that's what I've used, okay. They work fine. These others work fine also. I would stay away from something that is not one of those brands. Now, I don't know what the respected brands are in Europe. Pole 2. Okay, now let's look at the J-Pole. With the J-Pole... You've got this right here, see? This is, uh, usually they're made of a copper tubing. This distance from here to here is one half lambda. This distance from here to here is one quarter lambda. Okay, so that would be at two meters, give or take 19 inches and up here give or take 38 inches okay uh, and then you look at this and you go good grief my feed point is right here that's just charted right there that is true at dc but it is not true at rf this part right here is a one quarter lambda wavelength um, stub, transmission line stub, and it's shorted. 
at this end. So we have zero ohms. We go up to, uh, I'll just put H for high. It's theoretically infinite, not in reality. This is a, just a, a stub of transmission line that's shorted at one end. We know that the impedance is zero where it's shorted, and the impedance is very high at the other end because this is a quarter wave. Now, if you look at a wave, there's one sine wave. This is one quarter wave. So if the voltage is zero here, the voltage is at a max here, and the current is less, and down here, you're back to zero again. So this right here, we use a quarter wave stub to be zero here and then maximum right here, okay? So at RF, if this is zero ohms and this is high ohms, there's some point along here that's 50 ohms. And that is the feed point right there. Okay, so both sides, if you ground this, you know, send this to ground, some, some uh, wire down to ground, uh, you are got a place for the static to bleed off and everything. And then this goes to the lightning arrestor just as before, and this will work uh, fine. Again, to understand what is going on in these things, we have to think in terms of radio frequency rather than DC. Uh, often our intuition is built around um, direct current or very low audio currents. So the thing about a J-pole is that RF, it's perfectly happy. Um, about that dipole that's just fed with the coax, again, you bring it down to the lightning arrestor. You note a common theme here, and that common theme is use lightning arrestors at ground rods where it goes into the building. Now, you also want to bond uh, this ground rod to all other ground rods that are on your property here. And uh, if you have none at the antenna, then you have uh, one probably by the utility box. Somewhere around the utility box, you might have to look carefully for this, is a uh, stranded bare wire, sometimes it's just number six, uh, copper, I don't know what the metric equivalent is, that goes to a ground rod or an oofer ground or something like that. You want to connect these two. All bonding for ground rods means is they're connected. Okay, and the reason they're connected is so that if you do have a lot of energy on one side, it'll raise the voltages, whereas it might not raise them on the other side and it can cause damage in the house, fire even. So you want to equalize those by connecting a rod, or take out these extraneous parts, by connecting a wire uh, to all of them. The wire should be uh, pretty, pretty thick, should be bare, should be buried, um, and you can do a good job. Now the current best practices for amateur radio are described in the ARRL book on grounding and bonding, uh, version two, get uh, the second edition of this book. Uh, the there's quite a bit of difference between the two books. Uh, the first one was sort of amateur practice. The second one actually is a little bit closer to, in fact, it tries to be identical to the National Electric Code uh, for grounding and bonding of RF related stuff. If you go to Ask Dave number eight, it tells you about grounding and bonding and shows you where the requirements come from. Now, most amateurs have one ground rod right outside their shack. That seems to be normal amateur practice. I'm not saying that's best practice, but it will do you uh, good to have that antenna grounded. So there you have it. Uh, if you'd like to help support this channel, go to decastlercom slash support. Also, if you would please like and subscribe, it really helps out. If you would like to contact me, please contact me in one of the following three ways. If you are a patron, use the patron method to contact me. 
Uh, those come right into my inbox. I see them. One disadvantage to those is you can't attach a document. The next best way is to ask Dave at ARRL.org. And that is a regular email, and you can attach attachments and stuff like that. And uh, the uh, third best way, of course, is to simply write to um, Dave Kassler, K-E-0-O-G, P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. And that will get to me also. All right. And until we next meet, 73. <laughs>